The date is 2005. You're not so into video games. I mean, sure, you loved those precious 15 minutes you played on that borrowed copy of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas before your mum caught you and dragged you by the ear back round to Daniel Jefferson's house to return it, but for the most part, they're not so much your jam. That is until one fateful Christmas you are gifted Animal Cro- No wait, that's your sister's game. And it's only playable on her Nintendo DUS. You can forget about that shit. Look dumb anyway. But don't worry, you have something just as good. Conkers! Huh? But time goes by and she keeps playing the mysterious game. The more you try to resist, the more enticing it becomes. You're now on holiday in unspecified European country. It's 10pm and she's finally off it. You give in. You make a character. Welcome to the gentle world of Animal Crossing. Wild World. You arrive in your new town, an ambiguously aged humanoid, with an appearance of cross between Mr. Blobby and a South Park child. When you enter the town hall, you are given directions to your new house. Oh my good gravy, an entire house? All for me? And it's completely free? Five seconds later, you're introduced to Tom Nook. The main antagonist of the game, greedy real estate mogul Tom Nook is essentially your landlord, who you must pay off your debts to, or else be made homeless. Change, From the moment you enter the town, this guy owns your soul, and you work for him now. Thought this game was a no-stakes chill fest? Think again, motherfucker. After performing a series of monotonous tasks like the soul-destroyed, unskilled worker you are, you either now own your home, or have died due to exhaustion. For some reason, following the release of this game, Tom Nook was replaced as Animal Crossing's mascot. Um, quick side note, a kid but Mr. Nook charges no interest on his loans, and those two kids who work in his store, that we assume are his children who he has working for free, are actually two orphans he took in off the street and raised as his own. What a legend. Never doubted you for a second, T-Dog. Anyway, your immediate debts are now paid off. Time to get into the good shit. Living life as a villager. Aside from Tom Nook, there are tons of other characters who have become iconic in the world of AC, such as Mayor Tortimer, Blathers, Mabel, and this bastard who I cannot even speak the name of. There's loads of fun things to do on the island. One of the most popular activities is decorating your pad, unless again, this is your sister's game, then you get one room only. Nook's Cranny has a catalog full of wonderful pieces to purchase for your home. Or, you can just get lucky by coming into the store day after day to see what new items they have in person. Other ways to fill your time include fishing, bug catching, clothes shopping, fossil hunting, stargazing, engaging in friendly chit chat with other residents, <laughs> visiting your real life friends' towns, and, okay, my personal favourite pastime. Every Saturday evening, I would satisfy my caffeine addiction at the museum's own coffee house, The Roost. Then, watch a personalised performance by the one, the only, KK Slider. Known for such classics as... And... And who could forget his biggest hits... <laughs> now, these activities are great and all, but to spend money, you first need to make money, and there are plenty of cash generating ventures in town. You can sell pretty much anything for an unbelievably reasonable price. A hundred bells for an apple? What a sucker. Anyway, what else can I say? This game is the ultimate escapism. The level of creativity and quote-unquote efforts you put into it is entirely up to you. There really isn't a right way to play, which I think is why it attracted such a large and diverse fan base, and why it garnered the reputation as an excellent remedy for people's real-life anxieties. One of my favourite things about AC in its early days is how non goal orientated it felt. In a world full of achievements, targets and competitiveness, AC felt like such a breath of fresh air. 
Sure, all that stuff is a huge reason as to why people love video games, but AC really felt like a game made for those who just needed a wind down at the end of a long day. For people who play Grand Theft Auto just to roleplay as a taxi driver, um, this is legitimately something I do, and I'd love to know if anyone else does the same. Truly, one of the best games for the Nintendo DS. 6 out of 10, moving on! What followed Wild World was Animal Crossing New Leaf, which was released on the Nintendo 3DS to both a strong critical and commercial success. With the majority of fans feeling that it served as a great expansion on the AC universe while also maintaining its hearts. If you never played the 3DS, basically imagine the Nintendo DS but with added motion sickness. The most notable difference about the game is you are now the mayor. Giving the player the opportunity to flex their creativity and in general a lot more to do. Unless, again, this is your oh, sister's no, you game. Don't. In that case, here's your one room, get fucked. Where is Tortima, you may ask? Well, he refused to have a peaceful transfer of power, so the villagers did the humane thing and exiled him to live out the rest of his days on a deserted island. Another change in this game is that the majority of the shops are now in a new city area, separate to the main village. Look, my boy KK Slider has his own club now. Whereas before, the vibe of his music was... Now, it's more... Okay, real talk. Where is the roost? My beloved coffee shop is nowhere to be found. Had the makers simply forgot to include it? No, 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 of course they hadn't. <laughs> it is in the game. It just needs to be unlocked by donating at least 50 items to the museum. Okay, I mean, sure, that's fine. That's a nice reward, I guess. But what if I don't feel like smashing a thousand rocks just for a cup of joe? Sadly, this was just a precursor of what was to come. Seven years pass. Aside from the odd crappy mobile game, all is silent from Nintendo. The Nintendo DS is a great success. The Nintendo Wii is a great success. The Nintendo Wii U nearly bankrupts the company. The Nintendo Switch is a great success. The year is 2020. Someone in China ate a bat and now the world is trapped inside. Only video games can save us from excruciating boredom now. But wait, there is nothing new to play. All hopes were on the PlayStation 5. However, due to all delivery drivers now working from home, only one man on a donkey is now hand delivering each console. Enter Animal Crossing New Horizons. But I can seem to say goodbye. AC had known commercial success, but nothing like this. The game went on to sell 39 million copies. Do you know how much money that is? At least a hundred dollars. With everyone now playing the game, only one question remained. Was it worth the wait? Well... Okay, so you remember when I said one of the best things about Wild World is that it's essentially up to you in terms of how much effort you put into it, and that essentially the game feels like it was made equally for those who used it as an outlet to flex their creativity, as those who just like to do a bit of fishing or stargazing with little to no interest in really achieving anything? Well, with New Horizons, it's pretty clear to me which group of players have been favoured. Not only are you the mayor, but you can also now build and sculpt the landscape of a town to your liking. The world of AC is now basically a canvas 
for you to project your vision of your perfect town onto. Now, that's all well and good, but what if you're not the mayor? What if you're still playing on your sister's game? Well, for me, that's where New Horizons' main problem occurred. Yes, I know, it's been 15 years at this point, and by now I really should have bought my own console. <gasps> what you gonna do? In New Horizons, there seems to be so much more of an emphasis on building, collecting, and accumulating more stuff. And that's all great, but what about those of us fans who didn't really play for those reasons? And more play to do things like stargaze, drink coffee, and vibe to KK Slider? Sadly, in that regard, it's pretty barren. In many ways, it feels like the makers looked at a game like Minecraft and wanted to emulate some of that success, slightly forgetting about what unique qualities made previous AC games so beloved. Sure, KK Slider will visit your town once a week, sadly Mr. Slider lost his club due to drugs, and you'll have special events such as... Egg Day? But for the most part, it seems unless you're willing to grind to gain the expansions and unlockables, you're not really going to get to enjoy the full experience. Thanks to New Horizons, Animal Crossing may now be more popular than ever, but I can't help but feel that in getting to this point, a little piece of its heart was lost along the way. Anyway, that's where we're at. I hope you enjoyed this vague, rambling, semi-incoherent retrospective. Aside from like half the games, I feel like we covered everything, right? Join me next time when I run through the entire history of Conkers.